cars from the 1930s through the er, mid-1960s used a, a type of universal joint called a ball and trunnion. The ball and trunnion joint is really a strong joint, however, uh, their weakness tends to be the fact they need a, a boot to uh, seal out the road contaminants. Uh, this can be especially troubling. I've never actually rebuilt one of these before, but it's uh, about time I try. So uh, what I mainly want to do is get this new boot onto the shaft. Uh, in order to accomplish that, it will need to go through this, uh, the end of this cup here all the way through and then back out and then clamp to the shaft. Uh, I have a complete rebuilt kit. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to need all the parts but uh, I've got them available so once I get in there if there's a problem with any of the bearings uh, or any parts that look like they need replacement I've got them available to do it. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is remove these tabs that hold this cover on. Here. And I've seen a few diagrams that actually have a spring inside here, so I want to make sure I keep my hand over the end of this cap, just in case there is a spring in here. I want to be prepared to capture the parts. Okay, we've got the end of the cap off and some of the gasket material. We can see that uh, everything looks to be in pretty good shape here. We're now ready. Let's go to the back here and we'll get this, the remains of our rubber boot off here. Now, uh, the problem a lot of guys have with this is, is because when you pull these off, the easiest way to do this, or somewhat easy, would be to have this pin here pressed out and, and drop it in a press. And then you could slide this completely off, slide the new boot on, and clamp it. However, in what a lot of guys run into is this pin needs to be perfectly centered. A few thousandths off one way or the other will cause excessive vibration in the, in the joint and you know, which would be an unfavorable situation. Uh, what we're going to do is clean up some of this old grease now, and then we're going to prepare to try to slide this boot on through the housing and onto the shaft. Okay, we're going to apply a light coat of grease on the new co new coat of light grease on the shaft.
Now, the part that everybody claims is the hard part, getting this boot on through the housing and clamp the shaft. Been suggested to use a fair amount of grease, but not so much as to throw off the balance of the drive shaft when it's done. Basically, we just want to lubricate the yellow the rubber surfaces so they slide easily across all of the drive shaft components here. And we're going to do actually the outside of this boot too. Because that is going to be sliding inside that housing. Now that that thing's good and slimy, time to give that thing a shot. See where a lot of guys run into a problem with this. We have really limited space. What I think I'm going to try is to actually take a couple of pieces of wire see if I can get those down through there. The idea being that if I can pull this, these wires and pull this boot all the way through, I won't have to risk using like a screwdriver or any kind of tools that could tear up that boot. I haven't ruled it out yet either.
there you have it. We got that through there. You know, <laughs> I'll admit, I kind of impressed myself. The uh, read a lot of stories about guys who spent six to eight hours getting one of those on. So seeing one go on that easy, the wire really helped. And uh, okay, now we're going to clean this up. Get the uh, new boot on. Who would guess this would be our hard part? There we go. Get that on there. We'll clean this up a little bit. And get a clamp on there so it don't pop off again. Clamps are relatively simple for this. You don't have to get that super tight, you just want it to have a good seal. Okay, we've got the boot on. Let's move to getting the new joints on. Easier if you get, can press down a little bit. We're, as long as we get new bearings, we're going to put those on. Of course, needle bearings are always fun. side. Again, we're going to squeeze those needle bearings in there. Put the cap on here. Good. Now we're going to put just a little bit of lube on here. Uh, Chrysler, this is a 57 DeSoto drive shaft. Chrysler recommends no more than one ounce of. Uh, grease inside the joint. Basically you don't you just want enough grease in there to kind of lubricate the surfaces. Um, not so much as to throw the balance of the U-joint itself off.
And with that done, we're ready to install our gasket and our top plate. There's a little indent on each side of the drive shaft to accept the the tabs. Handler popped out there a little bit. And now we'll bend them the rest of the way around. We'll put this back on the bench. Great. There you have it. Pretty much uh, went a lot smoother than I'd hoped for. The, uh, we've got new bearings in there, got the new cup on, a relatively simple process.